Hello my darlings, it's Zui here and today I'm bringing you a Bakugo story as per usual. I hope you enjoy this one, I enjoyed writing this one a lot. But before we dive right into it, I would like to remind everybody that the best ways to support me is to watch the video until the end, like or dislike, comment something below, and share the video everywhere you can. Be it Discord, be it Twitter, be it Facebook. Just make other people watch my videos. I'd greatly appreciate that. This is the best way how you can indirectly support me. Now, if you want to support me more directly, of course, there's Patreon and my merch store. Both links are down in the description. That's all. And if you're new here, remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Uh, also, I would like to ask you, hey, put your favorite part of the story down in the comments below. Now, let's go right into it. UA was a prestigious school. Delinquency was forbidden, and it was a privilege to attend it. However, this didn't mean everyone was following the rules all the time. There were a few punishments for rule breakers. Most of the time it was expulsion. This kept most students in check. However, there were a select few students exempt from this. This was when a student either was too influential due to the power their parents had, or the student's quirk was simply too powerful to risk being kicked out, and then out of spy joined the League of Villains. Something you would totally do, and would if it were to happen. Luckily, you were one of these powerful students, and it was simply too risky kicking you out. And you knew that. Because of your constant breaking of the rules, however, you were a regular in detention. A two-hour period after school had ended, where you were under the watchful eye of Snipe. For detention, the hero had been given a slingshot and a few pebbles, to prevent a potential riot under the students. By now, you and Snipe had built a hostile relationship, where he reprimanded you constantly while you gave sarcastic comments and mild flirts his direction. Of course, you weren't attracted to your teacher, but he always left the room with a frustrated grunt whenever you went a little too far. It actually was a joy to watch. Today, you had just managed to get Snipe to leave when the door suddenly swung open. Your homeroom teacher, Mr. Aizawa, face red from anger followed by a rather embarrassed Bakugo, entered. Where's Snipe? barked Aizawa. You shrugged. Said his mom called. He needed to leave. Aizawa's eyes narrowed. His mother's dead. He growled and you raised an eyebrow. Well, if a dead family member suddenly calls, wouldn't you drop everything just to talk to them? Your teacher sighed and turned towards Bakugo. Sit down. Before mildly slapping the back of his head. The pissed-off Pomeranian boy mumbled something before sitting somewhere in the back of the classroom. Aizawa stayed in the room, behind the teacher's desk, arms crossed. You highly doubted you could get Aizawa to leave by making stupid comments. Then you look back at Katsuki. The blonde opened his back and painfully, slowly began pulling out his books and notes. And then he began writing, mumbling curses. Aizawa just scoffed before leaving. As soon as the door behind him closed, your entire attention was on Bakugo. Not only was it rare that someone else was with you in detention, it was unheard of that someone else from Class 1A would accompany you. Ten minutes of you staring at him passed before he seemingly blew a fuse. What the hell do you want, nerd? He shouted. You grinned and didn't answer. What's up with that stupid grin? Can't you see I'm working? It was cute seeing him try to actually do his homework. Or whatever he was he was working on. Your grin turned smug. Why are you here? You asked playfully. None of your business, nerd. Was it something you said? He growled but didn't answer. Oh, was it something you did? 
Your mind was gleefully imagining all the dumb stuff he must have done to piss off Ayazawa so much. You snickered. <laughs> Did you piss in his morning coffee? Bakugo dropped his pen and looked at you with disgust. What the fuck is wrong with you? You shrugged in response. I will imagine worse and worse things up until you tell me and then... <sighs> You sighed dramatically. I will probably be really disappointed. He looked away. Making you disappointed would be something positive. You chuckled and gave a few more guesses. You're about to tell him that he probably set eyes on so many photos on fire when he finally opened his mouth. <sighs> I put chalk dust on his chair. Didn't you notice his powdered ass? You actually didn't. The blonde grinned. Such a juvenile prank. Adorable. Would have gotten away with it, but he blew my cover a few minutes ago. Can't believe the extra managed to keep it to himself for more than five minutes. You shrugged. I can't believe the goody two shows in our class let you do it to begin with. I wish I was there. He gave a long sigh. Maybe it's because no one was there. Let me explain. You're still with us doing trading, right? You rolled your eyes. Yes. Okay, so I left early to do it. And Ida, because he's a complete and utter dork, wanted to be first in class and open the door while you were in the middle of doing it. Am I right? Yeah. Was his only response. And you? You were surprised. Usually any misdeed committed traveled far in the school, thanks to rumors. If I believe the rumors, you beat up a student from general studies. You scoffed. <laughs> I wish. It was that preppy blondie from 1B, that stupid Nick. You go. That stupid twerp dared to insult me while I was bored, and we were outside when my quirk is at its strongest. The little prick is probably still picking up his teeth. Bakugo shifted slightly, uncomfortable. Your quirk was called Patron of Stone, and allowed you to manipulate rocks with telekinesis. This meant that rocks and pebbles became mind control projectiles around you. But you also used it to reinforce your body with a coat of stone. Your quirk made Kurishima very jealous. So when the pompous dickhead was hurting your pride, you had him straight in the face with a rock-hard fist to the teeth. Your conversation with Bakugo died down, and just when he resumed writing, you opened your mouth. So, like, how long do you have detention now? He growled. Rest of the week. It was Tuesday. You grinned, and leaned forward on your chair. <laughs> Wanna do something afterwards? He glanced up at you. Like what? I have a fake ID. I could get us some alcohol. And then we spend the rest of the day in a park getting drunk. He raised an eyebrow skeptically. Your heart began to beat ever so slightly faster. A mild blush came to his face. <clears throat> Maybe. He grumbled. You giggled in response, and then blushed, in embarrassment. A sheet-eating grin plastered now his face. <laughs> Didn't know you'd be able to make such noises. Now you were upset, but before you could give a sarcastic reply, Sniper turned to the class. Uh, what are you doing here? He asked Bakugo. Aizawa put me here, Bark Bakugo. Snipe sighed. <sighs> I need coffee for this. The guy was completely overworked. And you loved it. As the door shut behind Snipe, you turned back to Bakugo. His little comment almost forgotten. You still haven't answered my question properly. The blonde raised an eyebrow. Do you want to go out with me or nah? He deeply inhaled. I won't pay for the drinks, only for my own. 
you scratched your neck. I mean, yeah, I was going to pay for it. He raised an eyebrow. You do realize I'm the one with the fake ID, right? Just tell me what you- Wait, you were serious? He interrupted. You burst into laughter. <laughs> Seriously, if you weren't so cute. You sighed happily, and he blushed again. He was feeling demasculated by you, yet somehow he liked it. Then the door opened for a third time. Snide waddled in with a cup of coffee. And the moment he sat down on his desk, the bell rang, marking the end of the tension. I don't get paid enough for this shit, muttered the hero 